Brandon, defense had some success in the first quarter, kept them scoreless. What was going well for y'all early in the game as a unit? As a unit, I felt like we was giving various looks, making the quarterback confused. Everybody was doing their 111, and you know we was just out there having fun. So, you know, the first first half was great. Um, you know, just disguising, you know, dropping, rushing, you know, just showing multiple things. I've, I've really felt like that helped a lot. How is the defense, you know, more cohesive, more consistent at this point, five games in the season than maybe y'all were at the start of the year? Uh, I feel like everybody's more bought in. Everybody has a better understanding of what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish. And everybody, you know, is just buying into what Coach Stu, Coach Mason, and everybody on the defense staff has has in store for us. So everybody's just, you know, just doing the 111th and just following the coach's plan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Brandon, y'all were able to generate some more pressure uh, specifically on the quarterback early on in the game. Is there anything different that y'all did maybe from previous weeks that uh, made that happen tonight? Um, you know, just showing different looks, you know, showing four down, three down, you know, just different variations of pressure, disguises, you know, just trying to make it confusing for the quarterback. So I really felt like that helped a lot. Sorry. Uh, Brandon, y'all were able to get um, pressure on passing situations tonight more so than previous weeks. How do you carry that over into the bye week and as you approach conference play, how do you keep that rolling? I feel like we just got to stay consistent. We just got to, first of all, we just got to get everybody healthy. You know, when the conference play, um, you know, everything everything's on the table. You know, we know what our, what our goal is. And, you know, um, we just got to be consistent. Everybody just, you know, hone in on the little details. I feel like that'll take us a long way. When things didn't go well tonight, do you feel like the, the breakdown's like a consistent problem? Is it the same problem every time, or, or is it sort of, you know, spreading the stress around, you know, to multiple areas on the defense? Mm. Can you repeat that question again. Just when, when things don't go well, what do you think is going wrong for the defense? What are y'all not executing when, when Memphis is able to move the ball? Uh, it's just the little things, you know, just miscommunication. You know, just ain't ain't nothing that we can't clean up. You know, it's just the little details that we just gotta focus and hone in on. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Amari, we'll, we'll start with you know the big pl pass play in the first half. They ended in a fumble. Walk us through that play. What happened from your perspective? What, what led to that situation? I feel like that was really um, just bad ball security on my end. You know, uh, Nick led me to a to a good spot, and I just got to finish that play next time and capitalize on it. You are able to hit some explosive plays. You were a big part of them tonight. When you are hitting those explosive plays, what are y'all executing well as an offense to generate those? Just everybody doing their job and everybody trusting each other. You know, we we won't have any success if nobody trusts the next man or if nobody's doing their job. So I feel like that was a very big part of our success tonight. Going into this bye week, you know, a lot of things to, to clean up on both sides of the ball. Um, where, where do you think that your focus needs to be as an offense right now, you know, this week? Being more consistent, I would say, and, you know, everybody maintaining, uh, making sure to keep up with their assignments and executing to the best of their ability. Um, obviously, the record's not what you want it to be, but as you go into the bye week and you go into conference play, how do you attack? Um, conference play, knowing that everything is still on the table for the team? We just got to keep going. Uh, I was on the sidelines, you know, telling guys, you know, keep your head up, don't flinch, because you, you know, we don't know what's going to happen after this. And if we just sit around with our heads down, you know, sulking in this, it's, it's not going to go good for us. So we just got to, you know, keep pushing forward, put all this behind us, out of conference play, and, you know, don't let the record affect us or how we played in these past couple games affect us. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, hats off to Ryan Silverfield and that Memphis team. Hey, they're they're a good team. Uh, I think our team grew up tonight. We had to come on the road and play, um, you know, second row game in a hostile environment, like for us. And I thought our kids responded the way we should. You know, we come out, man, we get a defensive uh, stop. Okay, man, we get the ball, man, we go down, uh, man, we put ourselves in position uh, to, to, to score. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes things uh, happen. But... Um, I'll take uh, Amari all day long because I know uh, Amari in that receiver room uh, competes uh, hard. But today was just one of those days where, you know, I just felt good coming into this game about this team. I thought we had made progress. I thought we tackled better. Um, and we still got to find ways to run the football. And we got to keep Nick upright. Um, I thought at times when we gave him time and he's surgical, you know, when he's got to run for his life, man, it's, it's tough. 
but we're going to get that right because I saw some solid protections that we have to sort of hold, hang our hat on, and the rest of it, man, you junk it. You know why? Because the dude is good. So you don't get him hit, and I think we put up points. So defense getting better, special teams, man, we got to continue to keep going, and I just got to make sure, man, that I don't, I don't put our team in harm's way by getting a penalty. Coach, you've talked a lot through this non-conference slate about knowing what a good defense looks like. Are you starting to see more of those signs after a day like today? Yeah, Coach Stu and that defensive staff, man, are working extremely hard, as is Coach Pascal and, you know, I mean, Coach Reeder. I, I, I think we're all grinding right now, right, because we're playing young guys and we're having to grow up, uh, like, before everybody's eyes. And people don't care that you're young. People want to see some results and they want to see progress. And so do we. And so, like, right now, um, I told our guys tonight, uh, you know, they were down. So um, we're all tired of being tired. But I said, man, we're about six inches away from blowing a, a, a door wide open. And when we blow it open, man, we're going we're, we're gonna to knock it out. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what this team is going to look like, but I got a good feeling about where we can go if we just continue to grab what's there. Um, they're, they're, they're focused. Uh, we just got to play cleaner. Y'all had a 10-man uh, penalty, yeah. you know, towards, I think, on a fourth down. Yeah. And multiple times this season that's happened. Yeah. Where, where do you think that breakdown in communication is happening, you know, on the all side right now? Well, what's happening, we're playing a bunch of young guys in the substitution patterns. You know, you, 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 see, you see a young man running on the field, and, you know, like for him, okay, uh, it's, it's, it's really his first time in the rotation, the first time he's played, like, this year. And so, as we're calling personnel groupings, our guys – especially like our young guys coming on the field, aren't doing a great job of communicating what it is. We have hand signals to communicate to the group what it is. So when you don't communicate, a guy doesn't know. So that's how you get a 12 man, okay? That's, you know, a guy not paying attention doesn't know, okay, I'm supposed to be out there and we're one short. That's what I'm talking about. You know, the popcorn is really coming from the youth, you know, like at times of what we're doing. And uh, for us, we get, we get 12 days to clean it up. So. Uh, in these 12 days, believe me, we'll be subbing in practice more times than I can count in order to get it right. Uh, Coach, uh, when you look at a group of five team like Memphis, uh, some, a team that's had success, uh, uh, pretty uh, solid just success over the past couple of seasons, do you look at a team like that and see um, – use them as an example of where you want this program to be uh, in the near future? Absolutely. I mean – I know Ryan Silverfield extremely well. You know, um, I, I look at I look at you know Coach Salem. Coach Salem uh, was one of my quarterbacks when I was in college, right? And so, man, he was at Michigan State. He's got a he's got a good staff. They've been together for a while, and so what they've been able to do is build a program. Uh, you know, like from the bottom up. I mean, when Nor when when Coach Norvell left, when Mike left, uh, you know, Silverfield inherited a program and that was good. But what he's done is continue to, you know, establish them. And in this day of NIL, man, they're still making it work. So they've got a blueprint. Ours may not be exactly like that, but ours is going to be very, very similar. We want to be tough, man. We want to score. Um, tonight, I, we, we held a, an, an offense that was scoring and putting up points on everybody, you know. So um, there's, there's stuff to build off of. But you got to be able to play defense on the road and conference in order to win. Right? So it's one thing to play it at home. It's another thing to go on the road. So, again, we're going to get it together. We're going to uh, see what this football team um, can do as we heal up and make sure that we continue to talk about the standard and the expectation within the culture of the program. Because it has to get better. We have to get better. And when we do, we're going to climb. Uh, you came out in the second half, and you were able to find some running lanes and le leading to the Terry Wilkins touchdown. Uh, what happened on that drive, and how do you continue to uh, keep that going on? Well, we changed it, right? Like, we went tempo a little bit. And I think sometimes when you go tempo, man, you, you, can, you, you don't allow them to sub. You can keep their guys on the field. They get tired, and all of a sudden, you know, a guy gets out of a gap, and all it takes is a guy getting out of a gap for you to get a 10-yard run. So, to me, it was just a change of pace. You know, Coach Reeder mentioned it to me. I said, absolutely. After the first first down, let's go tempo. And bam, I mean, it, 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 just, it just allowed us to get some rhythm offensively. So, you know, again, you know, sometimes, man, you got to change it up. You know, you can't keep doing, you know, what you've tried to do all night, I mean, if it's not working.
Uh, you talked about the youth on the team. Uh, redshirt freshman Isaac Rue started to see more uh, important action tonight in the second half. What have you seen from him that's pushed him into the rotation as you've tried to find more depth along the offensive line? Yeah, injuries. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think the simple thing that's pushing that's pushing all these guys, you know, in, into into uh, you know work is is injuries, right? So for me, I, I it's not that hard. You know, the bottom line is a guy's going to need a break or two if they haven't been taking reps all year or if they haven't played a lot of games, man, because that's a built-up type of endurance that takes time when you're getting pushed on, you know, snap after snap. So Rue uh, has practiced better. Therefore, you know, opportunities to play are going to show up. Uh, now, uh, on Nick's fumble later, uh, early in the second quarter, um, after that play, he kind of came on to the, uh, the sideline and was kind of uh, pretty fired up uh, with the offensive line after that. How important is it for him to be a vocal leader in that situation uh, after a miscue like that? That dude's so amazing, man. I mean, um, I, I love that dude. I love, I love how he controls, like, the room, right? Um, when he speaks, they listen. Why? Because the dude puts it on the line every time he steps out there to play football, you know? He don't make excuses. There are no explanations. You know, like, that's the dude that you want playing quarterback for you. And when that dude pulls the trigger and gets after those dudes, it's rightfully so. You know, look, the best type of accountability is peer-to-peer -peer accountability. You know, you got you to gotta become a team that becomes player-led, coach-fed, okay? Not, not coach-led and coach-fed because we don't play the game. They do. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, you got it. Thank you all.